Hello everyone, welcome back to Risa Does Makeup. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I go from this to this using only products that used to be my absolute favorites, my holy grail products. It's been brought to my attention that a lot of my viewers like when I do tutorials beginning with my skin prep. So I'm not currently using any products that used to be holy grails, but I am currently testing out some new to me products from a brand that I used to use all the time, which is Murad. I'm currently in the process of testing out three of their products. The City Skin Age Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 50, as well as the Environmental Shield Vita C Eyes Dark Circle Corrector. And lastly, the Environmental Shield Vita C Glycolic Brightening Serum. All three of these products are available to purchase at Sephora, and they will be listed and linked in the description box. I do want to send a quick thank you to Murad for sponsoring this first portion of the video. I'm going to begin with the City Skin Age Defense Broad Spectrum Sunscreen. I have used this a couple times now under my makeup and I can tell you that it does play nicely under foundation. It doesn't leave like a greasy film. I have oily skin so the last thing I want is for a sunscreen to make me feel greasy. And if you notice, I have skipped the area around my eyes because I am going to prep with the eye cream. I have to admit, I am super lazy when it comes to eye creams and you do have to be consistent for them to work. And this one sounds really, really promising. It contains stabilized, I'm gonna start putting it on while I talk. It contains stabilized vitamin C and it's supposed to help correct those blue, brown, and red tones in under two weeks. It also contains red and brown algae to help reduce the appearance of under eye puffiness. And it also has some reflective micro minerals to help immediately brighten. Now, as far as the serum goes, you can use it morning and night, but I find for me, the less I use before makeup, the better. So I'll just use a moisturizer and then a sunscreen, and I save this for nighttime use. But again, you can use it day and night. So this also contains gold stabilized vitamin C and glycolic acid. And as many of you know, glycolic acid is my favorite ingredient. It's the most effective for me in helping to smooth out the texture of my skin and refine the look of my pores. And it's a dual chamber. So you get the vitamin C on one side and the glycolic acid on the other. So you're getting a fresh dose of each every time. So I'm definitely going to be following up with you guys in another maybe two weeks or so to give you my full results to show you what sort of improvement that I've seen. Apparently. Okay, let's get started with the makeup. The eyeshadow primer that I used to use all the time is this one from Urban Decay. It's their eyeshadow primer potion. I do believe this is one of the first eyeshadow primers on the market, or at least one of the first that I was ever aware of. I remember I started using the NARS eyeshadow primer when I had my makeup boutique, but that was back in like 2008, 2009, I think is when the primer came out. Now I think pretty much every brand makes an eyeshadow primer. And then for my face, a long, long time ago, I used to use the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. I really liked it for the way it just blurred my pores so well. I couldn't find that one in my stash anywhere, but I found this one that's been neglected for quite a while that I used to rave about a lot and I still think is amazing. It is the Strivectin Anti-Wrinkle Line Blur Factor. This is so good at not only smoothing out my pores, but also fine lines. I used this on a client once a long time ago that had some lines on her forehead and this just, no joke, completely erased them. So for foundation, I am using my beloved Studio Fix Fluid 
Anytime anyone asks me what my top foundations are for someone with oily skin, I always say Studio Fix Fluid. Now in the past few months, there have been a couple of new foundations to the market that are definitely in the running to take first place for my top foundation for oily skin. I've talked about them in a couple of videos recently. One of them in particular being the NARS matte foundation, the new one. And of course, Estee Lauder Double Wear is fantastic for oily skin. I love the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush, but this will always be my OG favorite. And I used to always apply my foundations with either a beauty blender or a brush. And I think it was about a year ago, why can't I open this, that I started using this Stands Out Beauty Sponge, which is like a memory foam sponge. I don't know why I love it so much, I just do. It applies my makeup so quickly. And because you use it dry, it doesn't soak up nearly as much product as a beauty blender does, and it just gives me this airbrushed finish. Now the shade I'm using is NC37, and it's a little yellow and dark for me right now. I usually wear this one when I've done a little bit of self-tanning, used an at-home tanner. So this definitely is a little bit off, but I will bring it over my ears down my neck. People always ask me what shade I am in Studio Fix Fluid and you would think with all of the shades that this comes in that I would have a perfect match, but I don't. I usually have to mix and I'll mix an NC shade with an NW shade to get something more neutral. I just love the finish of this foundation. Now I'm pretty much still using a lot of my old favorites when it comes to concealers, the NARS Radiant Longwear, um, the Milani concealer. I really like the one from Maybelline, the Superstay. But before I became a fan of all of those, I used this MAC Pro Longwear concealer. And I think it still comes in this packaging and that's disappointing if it does because my issue with this concealer, my biggest problem with it, is that if you try to pump it, you always pump out too much and a little bit goes such a long way so you have to be careful when using this. But it gives such good coverage, it's really underrated, I think. And I'm actually going to bring a little bit of it onto my lid now, the Urban Decay Primer Potion does come in the Eden formula, which has a little bit of color to it, or I should say the Eden color, not formula. It has some color to it that neutralizes the skin on the lid like I'm doing here. So what I'm trying to say is that that's a good option if you don't wanna put concealer over your lids, over your primer. So now I'm not even pumping out anymore. I'm just using what was left on the side of the container. If you use too much of this, it will get cakey. I also know of a lot of makeup artists that use this as a foundation. So my OG loose powder for years and years was the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. As I've gotten a little bit older, I've started using powders that I think are a little bit better for more mature skin, like the By Terry Hyaluronic Powder, like the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrushed Powder. Um, I use the Huda Beauty Powder a lot, except that one is very, very heavily fragranced. I'm trying to think of any drugstore powders that I think are really good. Um, Maybelline Fit Me loose powder is good, but today I am using the Laura Mercier, but I am not using it to set my under eyes because when I use this powder to do that, I feel like it ages me 10 years. All of those other powders I mentioned are far better for mature skin when you want to set your under eye concealer. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use my Huda Beauty just to set under my eyes. 
I can't tell you how many of these I've gone through over the years. The Benefit Original Hula Bronzing Powder. Now this product comes in, I think a lighter shade and a darker shade, which was very necessary because for the longest time this was the only shade and it didn't work for most lighter skins and it didn't work for a lot of darker skins either. So I don't know what took them so long to come out with more shades, but I'm glad they did. All right, moving on to eyebrows. My holy grail used to be, again from MAC, the Lingering Brow Pencil. I don't think it even looks like this anymore, and I'm not sure if I have enough left to do both eyebrows, but I brought a backup product just in case. One of my current favorites, which is the Precisely My Brow from Benefit. But I'm only gonna use this if I can't complete both brows using this product. One of the things that always bugged me about this product was that it didn't have a spoolie on the other end. I believe it does now, but I also believe they've changed the color, which is why I'm not currently using it. So I'm gonna use the spoolie from the Benefit pencil, and I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed that I have enough product to do both brows using lingering. Woohoo, I was able to get them both done. And now I'm gonna set with this product right here. It's the Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. I buy this on Amazon because I can't find it anywhere in stores. There is a new Maybelline volumizer or fiber product on the market, but it is not as good as this one. So I will continue to buy this on Amazon until I can no longer find it. I just love how this gives me a real natural looking bushy brow, you could say. My eyebrows are nowhere near bushy. This product just makes them look a little bit more natural and a little bit fuller. Okay, it's eyeshadow time. Blast from the past. This is the Lorac Pro Palette number four. I have been a huge fan of the Lorac Pro Palettes since they first came out. I don't even know how many years ago, but I've always loved the formula. I think that they are pigmented, they're easy to blend, they have good staying power. So I think I'm gonna do just one of my classic soft glam looks using this. I'm gonna go into Brulee and Pecan. Now these do have quite a bit of kick up, but I don't mind it. Oh, I think I missed telling you what I did at first, which was I took the shade Chantilly, which is the matte ivory in the palette, and I applied that underneath my brow bone. And all of the brushes that I'm using will be listed in the description box. And now I'm gonna go in with a darker shade. I think I'm gonna use a combination of cognac and amaretto. And I'm gonna apply that to the outer corners, the outer third. As I mentioned, this is one of my classic looks, one of my classic techniques. And don't worry if it comes too far down, because we are going to clean it up. And so I'm making little circles and then blending upwards and in towards my nose. Now I'm gonna use one of my favorite 
soft gold shadows of all time. It's called Candlelight. And so I'm just packing that onto the lid. And I'm avoiding the outer corner. And I'm going to go in with the shade Black Current, which is a deep plum. And I'm going to just pat that on the outer corners. and then softly blend it into the gold. So that's what we have currently. And now I'm gonna take a pointed Q-tip and some eye makeup remover and clean up. Then I'm going to take a little bit more of that Chantilly shade, the light ivory, and sort of diffuse the upper portion of the eyeshadow. And then I'm also going to take my Stands Out sponge and just stamp a little bit in this area underneath the shadow where I used the um, makeup remover. Now I have said recently that I am no longer doing winged liner, but since this is supposed to be more of a throwback video, I am going to do a winged liner using, of course, the liner that I used to use all the time, which is this one from Kat Von D or KVD Vegan Beauty, I believe it's called now. This is the Tattoo Liner in Trooper Black. I don't have the full size, I just found this sample size lying around. So once again, I hope there's enough in here to be able to do what I want to do, which is a winged liner. Okay, that was the easiest I've been able to do a winged liner in a long time. Honestly, I don't know what just happened. It has been months since I have been able to do my eyeliner this good. Go figure. So now I'm gonna do one last little thing, which is take the Midnight shade, the matte black, and I am just going to tap, 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 right on the outer corner, right in that little bitty fold. Just the slightest little tapping motion. And then going back and blending it a little bit. So for the lower lash line, I'm gonna take a little bit of the Cognac and Amaretto that I used earlier just run that along the outer portion of my lower lash line. And now for the inner portion of my lower lash line and my tear ducts, I'm going into the shade Soft Pearl and applying that, well, just where I said, this portion of the lower lash line and the tear duct. Now I'm going to curl my lashes and apply some mascara. I've never really had a favorite mascara 
But one mascara in particular did stand out to me from the drugstore, and I recently purchased it again. It's the Voluminous Lash Paradise. So now that the eyes are pretty much done, we can start finishing off the face. I am going in with Milani Luminoso. I still think this is one of the most gorgeous blushes ever. It gives such a beautiful glow without being over the top. It works with so many makeup looks. And I could really stop here, I don't even need a highlighter. But I've been dying to use one of my favorite highlighters of all time again. This is the Mary Illuminizer from The Balm. This is another product that I sold at my makeup boutique in 2007 through 2010. And it's still, I think, one of the best on the market. Look at that glow. It might be a little bit much after the Luminoso, but uh, it's so pretty. I actually wanna put a little bit of this in my tear duct to bump it up a little. And even a touch right under the arch of my brow. Okay, it is time to show you one of my all time Favorite lip combos. I used to wear this all the time. We're gonna start with MAC Strip Down, which I'll be honest, is one that I still use at least twice a week, if not more. Then next up was Shy Girl from MAC. Topped off with Nymphette. However, it was not in this packaging. It was in this kind of packaging. And I like to put a little bit on my hand first and then use my finger. This was my go-to nude lip. Most of you know what I'm gonna say next. I need a little lash. I need a little corner lash. So I'm gonna go look around my room to find some that I haven't used in a while. So I found these lashes in my drawer that have already been cut, so I've clearly worn them before. These are the Kalana Classic Lashes, number 21. Now it looks like they've been cut, but I think I'm gonna cut them a little bit more. So the look is complete, and I have to say, I am really happy with the way it turned out. I am understanding, once again, why these products were some of my favorites. They truly stand the test of time. I would still recommend any of these products. As always, they will all be linked in the description box. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave them for me in the comments. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And if you're not already a member of the Risa Does Makeup family, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and join us. We'd love to have you. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under the same username. It's all Risa does makeup. Once more, I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my video, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. <laughs>